What happened is we grew lonely living among the things. So we gave the clock a face, the chair a back, the table four stout legs, which will never suffer fatigue. We fitted our shoes with tongues as smooth as our own and hung tongues inside bells so we could listen to their emotional language. And because we loved graceful profiles, the pitcher received a lip the bottle a long slender neck. Even what was beyond us was recast in our image. We gave the country a heart, the storm an eye, the cave a mouth, so we could pass into safety. That's a poem called Things by Lysel Mueller. Welcome to the Premier Wellness Travel Meditation Sessions, where I offer space and support for us to breathe, to create connections, and to up our vibrations. I'm Cassandra Marcella Metzger, and I'm the founder of Premier Wellness Travel and a certified yoga therapist. And I'm here to guide you in the discovery of this amazing practice of meditation during this unusual time. Each weekday at 10 a.m., I'll be here to guide you and inspire you to create possibility for routine and groundedness, kindness, and compassion. And I'll be offering a few tips and resources along the way as well. If you enjoy this meditation and you're watching on YouTube, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. And so today, um, I wanted to talk about things, the comfort of things. Many of us are perhaps trying to create some space in our homes by sorting out our things, giving away our things, organizing our things. And when I'm afraid or have anxiety about the future, I can find it challenging to shed my things. I'm afraid I won't be able to afford to replace them. I have fear about needing it in the future. I'm afraid that without that dress, I won't remember that dance. Or I'm afraid that without these files or papers that I won't feel as smart or as accomplished. So. Today, I want to think about what is it about our things that makes us feel safe? Why can it be so hard to release that which no longer serves us, that we are not using? And why do we feel that that defines who we are? So that even as in the poem, we personify inanimate objects, giving them faces and tongues and backs and necks. I love that poem. So let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and take a comfortable seat and close your eyes and we'll do a sound chime to begin our meditation. So close your eyes. Take a deep breath and exhale. And again, inhale and exhale. When we feel stressed about our environment, we can also feel that we're being hemmed in on all sides, that there are pressures coming in from all directions. We can also need a lot of thoughts that something needs attending to so that our thoughts feel crowded and chaotic. And this might even affect our bodies as they contract and the muscles themselves have less space. We can actually sometimes embody our environment a collection of things, a collection of thoughts. Maybe you feel shame about the state of your environment. If we 
kind to yourself. And just like in meditation, when we don't judge ourselves for thinking and not focusing on the breath, being judgmental about our environment is not in the end going to be productive. Go ahead and breathe as you consider that. Consider whether the unkind thoughts you have in your head can really motivate you. Does it make you feel more or less inclined to believe that you deserve to have a beautiful environment, to have nice things, to move in your home with ease? Our breathing can be fast or shallow, so just observe which it is. Or is it slow and deep? Allow space in your lungs so that it can be those your lungs can be filled with oxygen. Are you stuck in a sort of tunnel vision because of the pressure you're putting on yourself regarding your collection of things? And again, consider whether that pressure is hindering or helping you. Maybe it is helping you. Again, we're not here to judge, just to raise awareness so that you can create the space and the groundedness to create the life and the home that you want. Now I want to think, ask you to consider um, the space in your day. Is your schedule full up? Do you schedule any downtime? And consider, are you setting yourself up for failure by not being realistic about how much time is needed to clear space in your environment? And then berating yourself for not achieving perhaps overly ambitious goals. Again, meditation enables us to feel a greater sense of spaciousness in our lives, a possibility in our lives, as well as that sense of awareness. So I would also ask you to consider if your perfectionism, if you have any, might be crippling you. In addition to perhaps your overly ambitious expectations. And finally, I would encourage you not to underestimate the emotional toll that creating space in your environment sometimes takes. Memories can come up, memories that are painful, some delightful, 
And it's hard as you sort through your things not to, as Tanya Lee has, has noted, she was citing her teacher who I can't remember, I think it's Martha Beck, um, as you're going through your things not to fondle your feelings. I love that phrase. And then that's especially true going around mementos. I think it's one of the reasons why Marie Kondo suggests you do those last. Because by then you've exercised this muscle of shedding. Because it can be emotional to dig into your past lives. It can bring up loss and regrets and recriminations. So I only ask that you don't underestimate that. Um, in the world today, we all have anxiety, low-grade anxiety that can cause fatigue. And the process of creating space in our lives, physical space in our lives, can also, because of its emotional toll, bring up fatigue. So just be mindful of that. And inhale deeply and exhale. And then one Last thought as we wrap up today's morning meditation. Oftentimes our environment can mirror our internal environments and vice versa. So at times of chaos in our lives, our house can end, our homes can end up more chaotic. But likewise, moving in and living in and being stuck inside a home that troubles you, and it may not, but if you're in a home that in any way troubles you because of the amount of things that you have, that can affect your mental state as well and your emotional state. So I would encourage you to use a meditation practice to create a sense of possibility uh, in terms of what you can do and achieve and to bring that mindfulness and awareness out into your day as you try to uh, shed the things that you want to shed and create the environment that you want to create. Remember, the face of the clock, the neck of the bottle, our things are not people, and we are not things. And we want to be able to pass into safety without personifying the things around us, without attachment to the things around us. And to the extent that we can feel safe through our meditation practice, we will be able to shed our belongings and create the environments that we want. I hope you found this helpful. Pardon the doorbell. Yes, that was birds. Um, I hope you enjoy your day, and I'll see you back here tomorrow at 10 o'clock.